All right. Um, thank you, everybody, for uh, showing up today. First of all, I want to thank Darren and team CFPA, Scott, uh, Richard, and everybody else here to put this together. Thank you very much for uh, inviting uh, me and, and you to come speak today. My name is Andrew Dix. I am the CEO and founder of Crowd of Media Group. We publish Crowdfund Insider. It's uh, uh, one of the leading uh, digital publications covering the fintech crowdfunding alternative finance space. Um, so um, we're really you know, psyched to be here today to, to hear from Brandon and Fundrise and from uh, uh, Jeff here. Um, so uh, I want to get started. Um, this is Jeff Anderson. Yes. He is, yes, got that right. <laughs> Um, he's the co-founder of uh, Legion M, and we're going to talk about that in one second because I believe we have a trailer we're going to spool up and share with you that kind of a, a lead into what exactly Legion M is doing today. Do we have that ready to go? Can we fire that up? There we go. I was just watching the news and I think we're in shock. John Kerry is just materialized over soul. That happened like nine hours ago. You just hear about this. What have you been doing all day? You ever notice how it just keeps destroying everything in the path that it down? It's like it's being operated by a remote control. <laughs> Is that is that cool or what? I mean, I honestly I saw this trailer uh, a month or so ago, and I, you know I'm a huge film credit critic. I love I love going to movies, and uh, I watch that thing. And I'm like I want to go see this. This is like perfect for me. You know I, I and beyond that, Anne Hathaway and Jason Sudeikis. These are mm -hmm. people I actually know who they are. So here's a film that I would be willing to see and, and honestly my, my taste in films is very questionable but that's a, that's a different conversation. Um, but uh, Legion M, your platform is financing part of this film. I think that's totally cool. So tell me about this film. How, do you, how did you guys put this together? What's, what's up with that? Yeah, well thank you very much and thank you guys for having us. And uh, uh, so we are Legion M, we're the world's first fan-owned entertainment company. And so the premise behind our company is simple, and it's not something I need to explain to you. It's just, it's this idea that if you have a large audience of people that are invested in your product, that it gives you a competitive advantage. And in the world of entertainment, where there's more movies out there and trying to get people out to the theater is as hard as ever, on television, where there's more content than you could ever watch in your lifetime, uh, having an engaged and invested audience of people is a huge differentiator. And so we started out a little over a year ago to launch the company with this vision. And uh, Colossal is the very first project that we launched. And so to get to your, your point, that's a movie. It's a $15 million movie. It's got Anne Hathaway, Jason Sudeikis. Um, and it's not a movie that needs money, right? It was a fully financed film. We got involved after the film was already completed. But we worked with the distributor, which is Neon, and they saw the value of having a fan base, right? I mean, the, the, the secret in Hollywood is that every single project needs funding, whether it's a huge blockbuster hit or whether it's the smallest independent film. They all need financing from somebody. And they can take financing from a wealthy individual. Right, yeah. Or they can take it from us, and with it comes a legion of people. So we've got over 4,000 investors in our company so far, and every one of them has a stake in this movie. And just right now, the movie opened up uh, two weeks ago in Los Angeles and New York, and it was in D.C. this last weekend, and it opens up in 100 other markets. And we're arranging meetups around the country where all of the members of the legion are coming out to see the movie. And, and come see their movie. So obviously everybody who's invested in you to this film, 
they're going to go see this film. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that, that's and they're great. going to bring their friends, and they're going to tweet about it on social media, and it's all that sort of like authentic grassroots marketing that you know every marketer dreams of, and frankly, money can't buy. So, um, any initial numbers? Can you share? You know how how it's doing? Uh, How's the film I, doing? Or? I haven't seen it yet, but I promise you, I'm going to go see this film. <laughs> Thank you. See it. Tell all your friends. It's a it's an independent movie. So the more theaters that it gets in, it's in about 200 theaters now, and the more people go see it, the the broader the, the distribution will get. So um, the movie's done fantastic. It's actually one of the highest rated movies on Rotten Tomatoes, both from a critical perspective and from a fan perspective that you can see uh, in theaters today. So it's a great movie from an art standpoint. Uh, from the business of Hollywood standpoint, uh, it's still an open question. This, this coming weekend is a huge weekend for the movie, and so we're doing everything that we can to get the word out through our legion. And, and uh, over the course of the past you know, week or two, we've had probably over a thousand people come out from Legion M. So these are organized meetups. We've had meetups as large as a hundred people. Okay. Um, so it's, it's uh, yeah, I mean, it's... So that's, that's really cool. I mean, you're cutting out, because don't most films get, you have some, you know, really rich guy who doesn't have anything better to do than throw his money away in Hollywood. He goes there, <laughs> pumps tens of millions of dollars in there, the film bombs, and after a few tries of losing lots of money, he leaves, right? Isn't that how it normally uh, works? You know, it, there, it, there's quite a bit of that, and I mean, ho Hollywood is notorious for selling people on the glamour of being in the, in the film industry and stuff like that, and so... Um, and a, again, I mean, we've been able to move the needle, you know, on this film, and it's still the top of the first inning for us. Our, like I said, we've got over 4,000 uh, investors. We had a Reg CF that we did. We were one of the very first. In fact, right. actually, yeah. I learned that we were the first one to file on May 16th, and we sold that out with a million dollars. We launched a Reg A uh, about a, less let's, than let's, a month let's ago. Let's pause with that for a second, because you were one of the very first Reg CF offers yeah. that uh, was very successful and it was successful because you raised the limit the, the million dollars you did it kind of quickly mm -hmm. I mean it was you know blinking it was done and from a lot of people and mm -hmm. and this was all a, a total unknown on May 16th I think it was May 16th mm -hmm. I mean what were you guys thinking? I mean, this was a big risk for you guys. Yeah, it was. Uh, so the Reg CF for us was a great way. We wanted to prove our model. Like, you know, there's a, you don't know until you know. So and you jump so, off the cliff. Yeah, so, you know, we had a great idea. We had founded the company like two months earlier. So, you know, it's not like we were coming in with an established brand. We had a message. We had uh, an alliance of creative partners in Hollywood that we were working with. And this was our chance to put it out to the market and see if people were really interested. And like you said, we and ended up oversubscribed. We had we had to return people's money because we didn't have enough room. And in the you did WeFunder, right? Yeah, right, we used WeFunder and, for and that how? platform as well as through the reggae. Okay, so that worked out well. Yes, you raised the million. Uh, and how many people participated in that that funding round? We had it was th uh, over thirty one hundred. I don't remember the exact number. And, and I believe at the time, and maybe still, that was the most number of individual investors for Reg, reg CF offers. Yeah, so. as far as I'm aware of, we're about three times. The, the well, number of the second place and company. And so the average investment was not that big. It was no, our, our average investment was about 500 bucks. Uh, and like I said, we were oversubscribed. We ended up moving some of our oversubscription into a Reg D. So we were able to take the okay, accredited so investors. Okay. So we ended up out of that raise, I think, with about 1.2 or $1.3 million from okay. that raise. Gotcha. Now, today, you're in the midst of a Reg A plus office. And we already talked a little bit about that with Fundrise here uh, a minute ago. And this is uh, a little bit different. But you're doing this on WeFunders, actually WeFunders' first Reggae Plus mm -hmm. offer. Explain that to us. What's, what's going on with Reg Reggae Plus? Uh, you can raise up to $50 million. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I can't remember if you're trying to raise that, that amount, if you have a range. Explain. Yeah, so uh, our long-term goal is to have one million shareholders. In fact, our logo is an M with a bar over it, which is the Roman numeral for one million. And the reason for that is, if you can imagine, like I said, our average investment is five or six hundred dollars. So if we're successful at achieving that goal, we'll have five to six hundred million dollars to develop projects. So then you're a player. Which you're, allows us, yeah, I mean, that's enough hitter. money to, to, to make a dent in Hollywood. More importantly, 
a million people that right. are ready to come out and support those movies. And we think that'll make us one of the most influential companies in Hollywood. They'll see those movies regardless how many, how many tomatoes they get, right? <laughs> because, because once you're an investor, you, you know, you're committed to making it a success. Yeah, right? well, and, and, and that's a big part of it. I mean, uh, we, our investors, obviously there's a real swing for the fence financial investment opportunity, right? I mean, if we achieve that goal, we'll be valued at likely billions of dollars, right? Successful Hollywood studios. It's a very competitive, but very lucrative in industry. Right. right now, we're raising money at a $15 million pre-money valuation, right? So it's, it's, it's getting in on the ground floor of a startup company. So there's a financial component. But a big part of it, and particularly for people that are investing 100 bucks or a couple hundred bucks, is the chance to be emotionally involved, to be a part of something that's bigger than yourself, to be a part of something that's sexy and interesting and so a lot of our promise to our investors is not just that you're investing your money but we're going to take you behind the scenes so the director of this film Nacho Vigalondo we're doing an online Q&A session in a week or two we have all sorts of opportunities that allows our members to get kind of behind the scenes See. access and come along for the ride you get to be sexy and interesting and have a return well I mean, and, and, and 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 the great thing is like it's it's a great virtuous cycle because yeah. the more invested you are emotionally in the movie like right. that's what brings you out it's not the fact that you've got a hundred dollars invested in this movie it's the fact that this is your movie and you've been a part of it and you've seen it and so okay. you know it's it really it, it the cycle feeds itself that so, way so the reggae plus it's only recently launched a few weeks or something like that yeah how's that doing right now what's the progress uh, well now? we just cleared a million dollars in less than a month and so you okay. know we're very pleased with that um, you know, the way that we look at it, for us, it's less about, like, we're trying to raise a specific amount of money, right? The more money we raise, the bigger projects we can get in on. But as you can see with this, we're already finding that there's a lot of opportunity to get in on big movies and name brands, um, even though, you know, we can participate very small. People love to have us involved. We don't have to finance the whole thing. We can partner or, or, or come, in, uh, come in later. So. You know, our approach to this has been is that we wanted to launch the reggae, we wanted to raise our first million, and then after that we're gonna focus on the second million and the, and the third million. I mean, I think one of the things that's great about the JOBS Act um, and the fact that we're raising uh, shares via Reg A, which there will be hopefully soon a secondary market for, is it, uh, it eliminates the need, the focus for most startup companies on uh, a liquidation event or an exit strategy. You okay. know, our previous company, we raised $140 million uh, in venture capital uh, for Moby TV, Moby TV right. which we were the first ones to launch live television on your cell phone. This was back about 10 years ago. And so we've gone through that path and it's amazing for for venture-backed companies what a focus there is on achieving an exit strategy in a liquidation event. And I think that's one of the wonderful things with the Jobs Act company is that you can build a company just strictly focusing on trying to build value and not, hey, how am I going to get to a point where so-and-so so can so buy me So there's no blood-sucking VC behind you saying it's time <laughs> no. to sell. You no, know, no, yeah, no. Yeah. Oh, so, okay, so that's interesting. So now let's back up a little bit. I'm, I'm a, a, a committed skeptic. Any, mm -hmm. Anytime I want to invest in something, you know, I, I really dig into it if I have time. Um, what, it, for Hollywood, again, you know, I really don't understand it. The only thing mm -hmm. I think is like, well, if you're going to back a film, you want to get a percent of gross. Otherwise, you're going to get fleeced on the back end mm -hmm. because the accounting is so screwy mm -hmm. and vague. Uh, but if you get that percent of gross, it could be a long tail thing because people like me watch these kind of silly, campy films for years and years and years. You know, mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, um, I'm not even going to mention some of the films I like. <laughs> but uh, uh, so, what, what does, what, what's an investor getting when they go through Legion M? What's, what, what type of participation is this? Revenue is this ac debt equity? What is this? Yeah, it's a great question. So, uh, when you invest in Legion M, you're investing in the company. You're buying securities, right? right. Uh, the shares that we're selling, we have one, well, we have two classes of stock, but financially they're completely equivalent. So the shares that I have, the shares that our big investors have, the shares of the guys that put in a hundred bucks, they're all financially the same. So, you know, nobody wins unless we all win. Um, and uh, we are creating a diverse slate of, of projects. So that includes across film, television, VR, so different media, it's cross genre, it's cross stage. So like we mentioned Colossal, we got in on that movie after it was already completed. We also have another project uh, with Stan Lee and Kevin Smith, which is a virtual reality project that we've shot. We shot a, a VR piece with Stan Lee at Stan's house. Um, and that is 100% our project. 
project. We conceived of the project, we, we signed Stan and Kevin, and we've shot it, and it's in post-production right so, now. So what is exactly is the, the project, and what is it going to be? Is it's there... a uh, it's a one-on-one -on -one interview. So Stan Lee is 95 years old this year. He's celebrating his 70th wedding anniversary, and we used ultra, ultra high definition VR, right? Like literally stuff that's probably five years beyond. You should explain who Stan Lee is. Cause oh, uh, <laughs> Stan Lee yeah. is the yeah. co-creator of the Marvel Universe. So Spider-Man, Iron Man, the Avengers, the X-Men. He was the writer and the, there were a couple talented illustrators that were working so with him at the time. Star. He is, yeah, if you go to Comic-Con, he's like the Pope. <laughs> so There you go, um, that's, that's who I want to be. And uh, you know, I mean, a, a lot of people compare the superheroes, it's like, you know, the modern pantheon of gods, right? And he's the guy that created this, and who knows how long those are gonna last, but he's, right. a, he's, a, he's an icon of our time. And so what we wanted to do was to preserve him in virtual reality. Uh, so it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I mean, it's literally even closer than we are. When you strap on the goggles, I'm the viewer, you're Stan Lee, Kevin Smith is here. You're making Stan immortal. And we're having an intimate, it's an hour and a half long conversation where we talk about all the fanboy questions like the creation of Spider-Man, but we also ask him, what was the hardest day of your life and how did you get through it? We had him and his wife of 70 years describe the day that they met and fell in love. And it's just, it's, it's absolutely amazing. And we filmed it at an extremely high fidelity so that literally people from 100 years from now, right now if you try VR, it's really cool, but it's kind of like being stuck in a Trinitron TV from 1994, right? It's like the quality isn't that great. It's not quite there it's yet. It's immersive. It's lacking some polish. Yeah, but, but I mean, everybody understands that over the next five years, right. those, those barriers yeah. are going to go away. So we captured this in what we call Li-Fi, which is the fidelity of real life. When you put, when the goggle headsets get to the point where when you put them on, it's indistinguishable from real life visually, we've got that quality. Um, and so... Uh, our goal with this was not like, hey, how are we going to monetize this in the next 12 months? Because VR is a very, very nascent market. There's not a lot of money to be made today. Our goal was, how are people 100 years from now going to want the opportunity to sit down with one of the icons of our time? So you're doing film, you're doing VR, you're doing television. Game, game, television. Yeah. Games. Uh, we're not doing anything in gaming yet. We, we may get to there. I think that that's, there's a good opportunities, but right now we're trying to stay focused on, on just those core three. Okay, so that's, that's what your, your ecosystem is. Um, what are some of the other projects that are coming down the pipe? You've got Colossal, it's Colossal, it's out the door. Um, we'll find out if it's doing well soon. Yes, um, go see so, it, please. So, uh, <laughs> So what else is, is coming in the next uh, you know, we have six a, to 12 months? We have a, a, low, uh, a, a lower budget horror movie. Uh, it's really cool. It's a global anthology. Something for me again. You know, I eat these things up. Yeah. Are you a horror fan? It, well, yeah. Well, this is a, it's a global anthology that's eight, um, uh, eight award-winning up-and-coming directors from around the world. There's one from the U.S. The other seven are from different geographies. Each one creating like about a 15-minute horror short that explores local forth folklore and mythology in their area, right? So it's like, what does the boogeyman mean in India? And they're creating a, and putting it all together. <laughs> so that's one that that one hasn't even started filming yet. We came in as an executive producer on that. Um, I'll download it. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. Well, and it's going to be in theaters. I mean, it's you know, horror from a financial standpoint. Again, if you really well. if you look at the business of Hollywood, uh, is one of the easiest areas to make money because right. they generally don't cost that much to make but there is a niche of horror like fans me, yeah that 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 love them so we've got that project coming up we did a great project at comic-con which was called pitch elevator so you're all probably familiar with the concept of an elevator pitch we built a full-size elevator set on the floor of comic-con now working doors and everything they were operated by people we had volunteers come in and staff it the whole weekend um, but you would step inside the elevator and there's a cameraman and you've got two minutes to pitch your idea for a movie TV show, uh, movie or TV show. So we captured a couple hundred pitches on the floor of Comic-Con. Oh, yeah. We got a couple hundred more from our online submission process. And then we created a game that allows all of our Legion you know, members and investors to watch these pitches, rate them, and evaluate them. I, I and narrow it down to the future. top 10. Like that, yeah. <laughs> well, what was great about it, I mean, it works on so many levels. First of all, the whole premise is that anybody can have a great idea for a movie or a TV show. Very few people have the connections necessary to get that in front of 
one of the people that can make it happen. Right. So for those 10 people, they're going to win the opportunity to present their idea to a panel of Holly industry insiders and, and um, agents and so forth. And one of them is going to win a, a development deal with Legion M. So it, it works on that in, in that we're crowdsourcing effectively one of okay. our projects. The other part of it, though, is that this whole game where we're using the crowd, our legion of fans and investors that have a stake in it, right? So this is different than like people that are on the internet watching videos on Amazon. These are people that literally have a financial stake in the success of these products. Uh, are the ones that are narrowing it down and evaluating it. So we're leveraging the crowd that way, and even better than that in, is we've turned it into a game where that the people that are rating and evaluating basically win when they do a good job of predicting the ones that are gonna make it into the top, right? So you're gonna say, this is the one that I want to win, and this is how it, what the, the 10 that I think are gonna make it to the top. And so we're identifying the people within our legion that really have their finger on the pulse. So you know, if you look at the benefits of having you know, fan ownership and a large, you know, a lot of people say a million investors, like that's crazy, that, like why would anybody ever want that? It sounds kind of crazy. You know, um, and there's overhead associated with that. Yes. But there's also tremendous power. One of the biggest problems we have right now is there are so many people coming us, to us saying, hey, I do this, how can I contribute? You know, I would love to, you know, I'm a lawyer, I'm a, I'm a writer, I'm a whatever. And so we're constantly looking for ways that we can leverage the power of that crowd. So if you think of like spotting up and coming properties, you know, there's new books coming out every single day. There's new creators on YouTube. Um, if you're a studio, you have to pay scouts. You have to pay research to see what's hot. We've got a legion of people that are going to come to us and say, hey, I just discovered this guy on YouTube. Concept. you got to go check him out. So, so what does traditional Hollywood think of you? Do they look at you like you're, you're crazy, you're nuts, <laughs> stay away? Um, or are they, they kind of curious? Or are they embracing this? Where, where they the have Hollywood? been amazingly receptive so far. I mean, the fact that we got in on that movie, the fact we've, we've turned down a number of movies where people are coming to us. And I think that we didn't expect that at this stage where we've got five or 10,000 people involved. We thought, you know, once you get to 50 or 100,000, you know, that makes sense. But even at this early stage, they see the value of having, you know, fans involved and engaged fans. Like I said, you can take money for you're going to take money from someone. You can either take it from a wealthy individual or you can take it from a crowd of people. And since the crowd of people can it, it's like smart money for VCs, right? It's just it makes a it makes it so much better. I, I think we have just a few more minutes. We're going to open it up to questions of the audience for Jeff. Does anybody have a question for him, his platform, his process? Future films. Maybe you want to pitch your own film concept. <laughs> you I got mean, two minutes to a, pitch your idea. You, this is a perfect opportunity. He's stuck up here right now. <laughs> Hi. Um, thank you for sharing all of your insights. I do have a question regarding the liquidity of the businesses or people who are investing in these businesses. Um, what is the potential outcome? I do understand they become supporters of the environment and ecosystem, but is there a potential return um, expected for the most part for people who invest in the businesses? Absolutely. So, so in our case, like I said, you're investing right now at a $15 million valuation. Uh, our goal is to turn this into a $15 billion company. You know, I mean, that's a long shot, but you know, and we're very upfront with with our investors. Um, and this is important, I think, from a marketing standpoint, to tell people the statistically the most likely outcome is you're going to lose all your money, right? Because most startup companies fail, but those that succeed often go on and change the world. And so if we're one of those companies you want to be one and you get it on the ground floor, there's there's a substantial financial upside. Are you doing any dividends or a rev share? Or no, uh, no, no, not, no, I mean, we're a startup. So startup, at this okay. point, all of our, our profits, uh, you know, get plowed back into the business. And just to follow up, in terms of the revenue for the liquidation, where does that come from, from the individual company itself? Or is it a secondary market where you're offering, you know, people's shares to other people? I'm, I'm not sure I follow your question. I think you want to know if there's going to be a, uh, an IPO or the Correct. ability to trade shares maybe Correct. on OTC yes. Correct. market so at may, some may, point. Right. Well, that's a great question. And I mean, there's really, there's no real secondary market yet for reggae shares. So when we do our first close, those shares are legally tradable. You could go put it up on eBay, sell it on Craigslist, you know, find network to find a connect, you know, someone that wants to buy it. Uh, we have the expectation 
that uh, within the next year, uh, there will be the beginnings of secondary markets. Start Engine has announced one. There's other companies we've talked about that have said that they're going to do it. Nobody knows yet how they're going to work. Nobody knows yet how much volume they're going to be. Like Brandon mentioned, you know, there's big questions as far as how much, uh, how much there is. But um, so what we tell people is that, like, you got to look at this like a long-term investment, right? This isn't something that you can turn around and flip. Um, but for us, it was important to give people the option to sell their shares. There's yeah, no restrictions good, on it. That's a good question because everybody wants to have a liquidity event at some point in time, and you want to see that empowered and enabled. But I agree with you. I think that at some point in the future, there's people are going to figure out a path to create uh, more liquidity for these new exemptions, Reg A plus, Reg C assets. It's just a matter of time. Good a couple questions over here. Come on, G. Um, I just, this is Amon, he's from Howard University. Okay. Hey. Uh, and I have another Howard University student running Excellent. around here. Because uh, as Richard Tort said, invite someone else, ask them for a ticket. So we got some kids from Howard University to come visit. So nice. they're going to ask you a bunch of really tough, basic questions, answer them for them. <laughs> um, I had a really selfish question on the operational side. As you scale up to a million people, how are you just going to handle those customer services? Yeah, it's a great question. And, and like I said, I think that kind of the smartest question about a company like Legion M, everybody gets the fact that having an engaged crowd is an asset, but there's also overhead associated with care and feeding of that crowd and, and managing them. Like I said, our early, so far it has way exceeded our expectations. Uh, we had, for example, forums. You know, we wanted to build forums that allowed our people to talk. We've got a private Facebook group. Um, so we, we just put out a note and said, hey, does anybody know anything about forum software? We're trying to choose it. We ended up with 150 volunteers that either had experience working in forums or wanted to mo moderate forums or whatever. And they, we selected a team of six people or 12 people. They went off, they built it, they moderate it, they evolve it on an ongoing basis. And we have a flourishing forum system that is completely run by the community. And so again, for us, really, the, one of the keys to our success is figuring out how to tap you know, that group. I think fundamentally, uh, you know, a lot of people look at the Jobs Act as a new way to raise money. We see it as a fundamentally different way to raise a or to build a business and a fundamentally different type of business. And figuring out ways to tap the power of that crowd um, is really, you know, that's in our opinion kind of the ball game. I think we're uh, out of time here, everybody. First of all, big hand to Jeff. <laughs> Thank you very Check much. Check out Legion M and go see Colossal. It looks great. That's Thank you right. very much. <laughs> Thank you.